Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sandler and we're having another look at a Queen Odds game. This is played by Leela against a 2275 rated Lee Chess Blitz player. Blitz 3 minutes plus 2 seconds so a decent uh, time control for the human player certainly with these odds of course. I saw it live and I was just, uh, it was one of the first uh, Queen Odds games I saw and my, my jaw just fell to the ground basically when I saw it. So uh, I couldn't understand what Lily was doing. I'm, I'm used to it now that uh, it just looked like complete voodoo and the uh, the final attack was uh, had a really gorgeous point. So uh, let's have a look how this all went. So B3, A5, G4. Yeah, I mean, Leela is just playing all of these uh, moves in the opening. Simply opening lines, creating chaos, making the position strange, I think. You know, that's what humans really struggle with. You know, they really struggle to process what's uh, what's going on. And then, of course, there's this just unbelievable ability to find tactical chances where none should exist. You know, it's a potent combination. I mean, I'm watching uh, this all the time. The Queen Odds uh, bot is... Uh, incredibly popular um but yeah i mean black players are just really struggling to uh to uh to put leela away you know it's um and you know these are a lot of players 2300 somehow and you know i'm looking at somebody here who's uh um scored quite well against the old bot but um when the uh the bot was updated on the 11th of november you know then uh they're just um i'm looking at uh, 11 losses in a row somehow incredible so um, e5 from black, nothing wrong with this, e5 and d5, and now bishop b2. Leela's not worried at all about the pawn on g4, you can take it if you like. Black plays bishop d6 to uh, protect the pawn on e5, and Leela goes f4. Yeah, I tweeted that, um, uh, and also tooted, that um, uh, you know Leela plays the, the worst moves on the board, basically, uh, whenever Leela has queen odds. Uh, the key point is that you can't get mated like that because uh, the king's got the escape square on d1. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not particularly great. Queen h4 check, you can't resist it. And then bishop takes g4. Um, f takes c5, bishop e7. So, I mean, things have not improved for Leela um, in principle, but... Um, yeah, you know, there's some open lines, right? I mean, the um, the long diagonal um, is um, vaguely open for the uh, dark squared bishop, and there's the uh, the f file and the g file. G2 is open, and this is the the problem of the black queen. But Leela's worked out that uh, tactically speaking, black isn't able to force a win. Just uh, here, you know, queen uh, f2, you go knight h3, so you you always manage to uh, to get out somehow, but. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, um, yeah. Nobody's claiming that it's uh, that it's easy, right? <laughs> so uh, knight c3, hitting the uh, the pawn on d5, looking for knight takes d5, knight c7, c6, and now Leela plays knight f3. Yeah, Black's got to decide what to do. Queen f2 would be uh, quite decent. Bishop f3 is not silly either. E takes f3, and now knight d7. Um, I mean, the engines are just resigning, right? Uh, at this stage, you know, they just say uh, no, nothing, uh, nothing of interest here. But Leela's not bothered. Ninety two. So, you know, so far Black's done fine. No, still a queen up and uh, no particular danger. Um, F six played by Black now. Um, we do notice in these games that there's always a moment where the uh, the Black player sort of, I guess, seems to feel that okay, it's time to finish things off now and uh, goes for it and um, often overlooks something at least you know that uh, Leela's trickiness sort of uh, causes some confusion and uh, you have the feeling it's often uh, you know at that stage not crucial at all really but it just throws the human player a little bit and just starts him on that path to uh, to feeling uncertain I mean knight h6 looks like the uh, the most uh, natural move here you know just uh, bringing the knight into f5 after that would be quite a nice idea engines also suggest moves like knight f8 to e6 you know all of them good positional moves basically um but if you play knight h6 to f5 you can also try and play knight b6 to c4 you know just good stuff basically um f6 played e6 and now black went a little bit bananas uh, and played queen f2 um you know 
this looks like a strong move, but I mean, it's not actually going to win anything at all. I mean, uh, you know, after you go queen f3, I just go rook g1. So white takes a piece back. But of course, you know, you're still uh, queen and uh, pawn for a piece. You know, it's not exactly uh, uh, great news. Um, Leela's also um, a little bit passive here. So Leela starts sacrificing pawns again just to free stuff up. And black takes the opportunity to pick up a few pawns. Maybe, you know, that feeling of, uh, oh, gave a piece away. I shouldn't have done that. But let me grab a few more pawns then. Queen f3, rook g1, queen b3 uh, played so that you can take on c4 with the uh, with the queen with check. Um, but now king c1, queen c4, and then bishop c3. And I think black probably realized to his horror here that um, uh, knight d4 is actually a threat trapping the queen. I mean, in all fairness, even after knight d4, um, if you then took on f1, you would still have three pawns uh, advantage. You know, it's uh, but obviously starting with a queen plus, uh, it's hard to reconcile yourself uh, to that. And um, but black's a little bit uh, irritated about the move rook takes g7. Um, and uh, somehow this is where it all I think, you know, it all really starts to go wrong for uh, for black. Um, I mean, black hasn't played it great so far, but I mean, you're still very much in the winning mood. Um, what the engines recommend, actually, is the move queen h4. And um, you might ask yourself, you know, why would you allow um, um, white to play rook g7? Uh, we go knight h6. And you're going to see what the, why the engines wanted, wanted to put the queen on h4 here. It does actually have a, a very good point. What black did was play the move d4. Knight takes d4, queen f7. So black was, uh, you know, really looking here to um, to keep his position nice and tidy, which, you know, in principle is a good idea. But yeah, I mean, it's it is all it looks a little bit strange somehow the black position. You you certainly looking at it, you wouldn't say that uh, the black has has clearly made um, um uh, you know a, a good job of uh, of playing with queen odds somehow because the king's in the center. Development isn't great. Um, actually, white seems to be a little bit more developed. Uh, pieces are more active. And actually, there's a rather unpleasant tactical idea here. There's bishop h3 check. And black really here had to um, uh, to play the king back to e8. It looks a little bit not very happy about it somehow. Um, but, um, you know, that would kind of be the the best way to uh, to deal with this. Because black played the move, um, um, I mean... Playing against Leela, it's not the end of it by any means, right? There's lots of attacking going on. But black played king c7 and got hit by the rather shocking, I'm sure, rook takes g7. The idea being that after queen, queen g7, we've got knight e6 check. And uh, you know, I said, why, um, you know, why did black want to put the queen on h4? Uh, why were the engines keen on putting the queen on h4? Just got to mention it now. Uh, that was to stop bishop h3. So it keeps the king safer, basically, when you do that. You know, and uh, rook g7, knight h6. There's no bishop h3. You're still, uh, you know, restricting this bishop. So you've got time and, and you're threatening rook g8. You know, I mean, uh, <coughs> Lila's going to have to do a lot more work to uh, to make this successful. So, um, but anyway, back to this position here, rook takes g7. And I, I do think that, um, you know, one thing that uh, if you're going to learn anything from this odds chess, it's um, tactics. You're going to spot, you know, these sort of tactics, um, uh, you know, much more quickly if uh, because uh, if you miss these, then, um, you know, you're going to get into uh, into all sorts of trouble. It's still not bad, right? I mean, uh, queen h5, you're still escaping bishop g4 and queen h2. But obviously, you've lost control completely, right? I mean, um, this bishop is uh, pinned to the king. The knight can't can't move, um, you know, uh, is unlikely to move because you'll just give away the bishop. So you've got your queen active, which is doing uh, great work, but it's nerve wracking, right? And Leela ups the pressure with b5. Uh, the engines don't want to do this, but... Yeah, I mean, this is really the move that the, the humans don't want to see, right? You're starting to open up the king side. Now, the engines feel that uh, c5 was the way to uh, to go, you know. But, um, I mean, um, for example, uh, you know, Torch Stockfish are recommending this one. The knight's coming round. We're going to have bishop a5. You know, I, I mean, you know, you'll have a bishop f3 somehow to attack b7 if this bishop moves. You know, it's it's... 
you know, yeah, of course, it's all most likely good. But, um, you know, it, it's it's not the challenges aren't ending at all. So, I mean, Black played King B6, you know, which um, trying to get out of this pin. Um, but I think he kind of missed what Leela had actually uh, done because um, after B takes C6, we're at minus 3.01. Eh? So, um, yeah, starting from more than minus 10, you know, uh, this has gone pretty well. B takes C6 and Rook B1 check. And all of a sudden, all of White's pieces are coordinating. And, you know, that's four pieces, you know. Uh, five pieces rather, you know, uh, rook g7, bishops on g4, c3, rook b1 now and knight d4. And um, I mean, this is feeling quite scary because when you're looking at black's pieces, you know, these guys are just not, they're not coordinating at all simply. It's just the fact that black's got a lot of material. And here black actually had two decent moves. King c7 was the best. Um, according to the engines but yeah okay I mean there'll be stuff like 96 or whatever right I mean you know you, you, you're going to be uh, ping-ponging around with your king somehow it's not uh, necessarily going to be uh, going to be easy um, king c5 was apparently fine as well but you know it's the same sort of story right I mean uh, maybe the rook goes to b7 and you know I don't know you'll have 96s and bishop b4s and, and all that sort of stuff I mean you know I think your chances of losing this with um, with black are, are very high. I mean, black didn't blunder with king a6, which just allows bishop e2 check with a win, right? Because king a7, there's knight c6. So, so what black did was um, um, uh, slightly more cunning. He went king a7. And after knight c6, he went king a6. And, um, you know, obviously there's no longer bishop e2 because of queen e2. And it's a clever... A clever way to do it. But obviously, you know, this is feeling like, oh, my goodness. The one thing that you do, you can say for uh, for this is the black is now threatening queen h1 check takes c6. So white's got to do something. And white protects against that threat. But also, uh, and this is what I hadn't realized, it just saw it a couple of moves later. And I thought, oh, yes. Um, it also has an extra little point to it. So you might want to uh, to think about, you know, what is White's uh, best move? It's not so un not so unobvious, but what is the second threat that White's introducing when you uh, when you play that? And uh, that's the, the real vision. Um, it's the move Bishop F3. Um, so stopping um, uh, Queen H1 check, also stopping any Queen G1s. And um, uh, so, yeah, the queen uh, hasn't got a great deal of, um, of uh, space there. And obviously the queen's got to stay on um, uh, protecting e2 at least, because otherwise bishop e2 is going to happen. So black played uh, bishop a3 here, king c2, and then played knight e7. Um, I mean, if you do something like knight h6, we go rook b7 and, uh, you know, we're, we're just threatening uh, um, rook b6 check. And if you go bishop c5 to cover, we've actually got rook b5 here, threatening rook a5 checkmate. Yeah, the king's uh, cut off, right? This uh, rook has become active, you know, b4, b5, take c6, it's done it. But um, uh, black played knight e7, which looks, you know, fine, right? And uh, I mean, I've mentioned this before. Uh, you know, the closest thing I've I've come to uh, to this sort of odds chess is uh, playing in simultaneous displays. Uh, um, you know, sort of um, misjudging your opponent, sacking stuff early, and then desperately trying to catch up after. And uh, it looks like, you know, oh god, it's all um, it's all been a bit painful, but black seems to have got out of it, you know, a little bit. You're going to give back some material, and uh, yeah, you know, um, white's still not going to be mating somehow. But um, yeah, the engines, of course, had spotted uh, a, a gorgeous geometrical motif, and that's the move rook g4. And uh, there's no way to stop mate. Rook takes a4. It's just completely winning after knight c6. We go rook takes a4 check, knight a5, rook a5, and yeah, just this incredible coordination of Leela's pieces has turned out to create mate. Yeah, I, I saw this live and I was just, you know, I was just couldn't believe what was happening. I couldn't believe the, uh, you know, the uh, the opening moves, which I just couldn't understand at all. What on earth is this? You know, I, I thought, has Leela got a bug, right? I mean, is Leela, has Leela just gone crazy? Uh, you know, are they going to have to reset it after? But yeah, it's all the, the method to the madness. Basically, you know, 
if Black's got an extra queen and nothing's happening in the position, then then you're just going to lose, right? The only way that you um, that you uh, uh, can fight the queen is to make the position as open as possible and give your pieces space. And of course, you know the risk there is that uh, you know um, with the lead, with lead, with the opponent's queen on top of it that you're going to get even killed, you know, even more killed. But uh, but that doesn't really matter, right? And um, Leela's excellent, of course, at judging uh, how where are you getting mated, which is not as easy as you think, even with an extra queen, and somehow managing to create, uh, you know, chances. Of course, held by human players who are getting confused, who are missing little things, and of course, engines would never miss, right? Uh, little tactics, taking some strange decisions somewhere. But yeah, you know, with the queen odds, you know, you sort of think, yeah. I mean, my leeway for for error is so big, you know, it can't possibly be uh, be uh, be true, right? But yeah, it happens. You just get um, you, you you can actually lose pretty much any position when uh, when Leela is playing odds. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know the real challenge for human players is keeping concentration all the way, and um, you know just uh, not seeing the game as well. I'm winning, so I must win. But just seeing the game as a as a test of your concentration from beginning to end. If you can play a game against Leela and really keep control all the way uh, with queen odds, you know, uh, not giving Leela the sniff of a chance, then you're playing well. I, I think you've really learned something, and that's going to really stand you in good stead when you um, when you're there to convert your own advantage. Advantages. You know, I think that's what uh, the queen odds in particular will teach you. And um, yeah, you know, obviously rook odds and knight odds is the same, but at a, at a much higher level. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, with rook odds and knight odds, keeping control of Leela the way Leela's playing, probably impossible. Um, but certainly being able to roll with the punches, being able to um, readjust when uh, when some stuff goes wrong, you know, um, just be very um, uh, cool and objective and say, well, I'm still, uh, I've lost a pawn there, but I'm still a piece for a couple of pawns up or Leela's got to attack, but I'm still, I'm still in the game. I've only got a slight advantage. Keep on going, you know. I mean, it's. Uh, um, I think it's really, you know, if, if you can do this against Leela, then uh, then I think you've, you know, in your own games, you're really going to have improved a lot. So um, yeah, do try it. And uh, as I said, I'm uh, gearing up at the moment to uh, to try it as well. So it's going to be fun. So um, yeah, there we are. Do stay tuned. Got plenty more of these amazing things to come, and uh, hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.